Welcome everybody to worship the United Methodist Church in Winona. We call ourselves Wesley. <laughs> I'm working on my introduction. It wasn't so hot last week, but I think I'm, I'm improving. So. Welcome to worship. We're delighted you're joining us today. We have just really one significant, maybe two, announcements that we want to make this morning. First of all, we want to remind everyone that's here in the Winona, Minnesota community that we will be hosting a blood drive on Thursday, May 21st. It'll be a little different this time because of the safety precautions we need to take to keep all those who are coming to give blood and those who are volunteering and those who are working safe. So um, people will be wearing masks. They'll be taking all the proper precautions, but there is such a desperate need for blood right now. So if you're able to give, we strongly encourage you to come by. If you are wanting to volunteer and help, please, if you don't get an email about ways to do that, then please contact the church office and we'll make sure you find out how you can help. We also wanted to remind everybody uh, to be attentive to your giving uh, this time of the uh, the, the, uh, our shutdown, we want to make sure that people are giving. So far, we're receiving a steady stream of, um, of uh, gifts through the mail and through bank deposits, and we, we thank you for that. But uh, uh, keep in mind uh, your commitments to giving. But also, we want to challenge ourselves as a church, knowing that there are other uh, nonprofits out there that are doing amazing work that are really having difficult time right now. Uh, continuing their ministries of, of serving the community, whether it is for health or for shelter. Uh, there's also uh, other groups such as uh, the, the arts uh, that are suffering uh, because um, people aren't able to come, but they, they still need to pay bills. So we're trying to find creative ways of being able to support our neighbors and not just feel like we have to uh, do everything to survive within our own church context. We want to be uh, a conduit of God's grace and, and largesse and being able to, to serve the, uh, our neighbors around us. So think in creative ways of, of, of how we can do that because we need your dialogue, we need your insights as well. And with that, let us prepare to worship. Yeah. 
Living God, as we come together in worship today, forgive us when we leave Jesus Christ in whom we meet and know you in the back part of our thoughts. Retrieve our wandering minds and fix them on the wonder and holiness of you clothed in human flesh. Holy God, forgive us when we worship idols of our own making, God's fashion from our own selfish ends, those things we think we know and understand. Bless and renew our lives with your grace. Loving God, forgive us in this time of isolation when we ignore the suffering, fears, and hopelessness of so many people, young and old, focusing solely on our own suffering, fears, and hopelessness. When we ignore others, we deny your commandment to genuinely love one another. Inflame and renew our compassion with your love. Creator God, forgive us when our desire to cling to how things used to be closes our hearts to finding new ways to be a community together that addresses injustices throughout this world. Restore and renew our sense of what it is we already know deep within our souls, that you, in whom we love and move and have our being, are never far from any of us. This is the truth we know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to our virtual children's moment with our virtual children Andy and Anne. This is Anne. This is Andy. I've had to separate them because when they sit together, they don't always behave well. So that's why they're sitting like this. Now, in just a little bit, we're going to talk about ways to know, ways we have experienced and know God. And here's the thing. When I was little, I thought I knew everything there was to know about God. God looked a little bit like, oh, this really wise man with a big white beard sitting somehow on a, on a cloudy throne up in the heavens. And I thought that was God. Then as I got older, I realized God is not just a man or a woman, but that God is far beyond all of that. And that God doesn't just sit up in the cloudies, cloudy thrones, cloudy clouds, whatever the words might be. But God is present in so many ways that I couldn't understand as a child. And so... It's important for us to recognize that we only see a little, a little bit of our understanding of God as we grow. And we keep understanding more and more, but we really don't get the full glimpse, even though God continues to reveal God's self to it all the time. Um, so today I have an example of how we, we just know parts of God. So I'm going to blindfold myself with my handy-dandy trusty blindfold like this. And then, after I do this, whoops, well, I can't do it. Okay, hang on, I'll try again. Then Pastor Robert is going to bring me 
something and I have to figure out what it is without looking. I don't know that I'm being successful here, but I'm going to say I am. Okay. All right, Pastor Robert. Okay, so the first thing I can say is I think whatever Pastor Robert is bringing likes to breathe very heavy and it's going, ha, 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 ha. Oh, and I feel hot breath and, and flappy ears. So whatever it is, it, it flies and it breathes and it has furry wings. That's what I think I know about whatever Pastor Robert brought. Now, can you put my hand on whatever? Are you still here? No, that's not right. What is this? Well, it feels hard and fuzzy and wiggly. So I would say what Pastor Robert brought is something that flies with soft, flappy wings and has a hard, wiggly body. Oh, oh, hello. And it makes whiny sounds. Now, obviously, there's not, I don't think there's any, care, any creature on earth that has a hard body, hard body like this with a wet tip and wings that are furry and flappy and pants and smells like dog breath. So I'm going to guess that this is a dog. Am I right? Am I right? Oh, look at you. Hello. You're such a good boy. But if I didn't know, which I did know, if I didn't know this was our dog, and I only experienced first the sound of him panting, and then the flap of his ears against my, my arm, or the feel of his nose under my hand, I would not picture this at all. I wouldn't understand what a dog was, if that's all I saw. Sometimes that's how we see God. We just get a, a glimpse of God's presence, a, a brush of God's grace. And we think we know everything there is. But I'm telling you, there's so much more than any of us can ever understand. So that's why we worship. And that's why we pray. And that's why we spend time together with scripture and listening for God's presence. And trying to do what God has asked us to do. So that we can get more and more of the parts of the puzzle that make this picture of God. So that what we think we know in our head is what we truly experience in our heart. So let's pray. Are you just going to nap through the whole thing? Okay. Loving God, we are so grateful that you are patient with us even when we don't fully understand you or truly understand what it is you're having us do. When we only get a little bit of the picture, you still love us and you still give us grace, and you still give us time and ways to know you better every single day. And for this, we give you thanks. And everybody says, amen. Oh, were you praying? Oh, you're such a good puppy dog. Swallow white of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. I swallow white of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it
I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. The reading this morning is from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will do as I command. Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, who will help you and always be with you. The Spirit will show you what is true. The people of this world cannot accept the Spirit because they don't see or know him. But you know the Spirit who is with you and will keep on living in you. I won't leave you like orphans. I will come back to you. In a little while, the people of this world won't be able to see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you will live. And then you will know that I am one with the Father. You will know that you are one with me and I am one with you. And if you love me, you will do what I have said and my Father will love you. I will also love you and show you what I am like. The Word of God for the people of God. The scripture reading for today is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31, and it's from the contemporary English version. So Paul stood up in front of the council and said, People of Athens, I see that you are very religious. As I was going through your city and looking at the things you worship, I found an altar with the words, To an unknown God. You worship this God, but you don't really know him. So I want to tell you about him. This God made the world and everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth, and he doesn't live in temples built by human hands. He doesn't need help from anyone. He gives life, breath, and everything else to all people. From one person, God made all nations who live on earth, and he decided when and where every nation would be. God has done all this so that we will look for him and reach out and find him. He isn't far from any of us, and he gives us the power to live, to move, and to be who we are. We are his children, just as some of your poets have said. Since we are God's children, we must not think that he's like an idol made up of gold or silver or stone. He isn't like anything that humans had thought up and made in the past. God forgave all this because people did not know what they were doing. But now he says that everyone, everywhere, must turn to him. He has set a day when he will judge the world's people with fairness. And he has chosen the man to do the judging. God has given proof of this to all of us by raising Jesus from death. The word of God for the people of God. Well, here we are in our home, sheltering together and with our family and our dog and with your cats. And I hope that you are um, enjoying your time and making the most of it, um, engaging in wonderful cooking and uh, not just uh, thinking about all the, the worries of the world, but also taking time to expand your heart and your, your mind and your spirit. Uh, a similar thing happened to us last week when we invited everybody, we thought, down to the church to have a, a physical experience of communion where after the worship service that uh, people can get in their cars and line up and come through and then get out of their cars and we were in masks and uh, but everybody seemed to recognize us and we um, we uh, had plenty of Purell 
and we gave a physical communion and we were able to look into people's eyes and tell them about the, the brokenness of the world um, in which God has entered into in Jesus Christ and um, became also broke on our behalf so that we could be, can become mended and whole. It was just so beautiful to, to have that experience with people as they came forward and to actually check in, how's it going, um, what, what's going on in your life, and then to be able to have that moment of communion. There's uh, 27 people that came through. Yeah, so beautiful. But it, it reminds us of um, just the, the physicality of coming together um, and to be able to see both the worries in, in people's expressions, their concerns, but also their, just their desire to reconnect uh, in a three-dimensional world with people that they love and care for. And we are all uh, experiencing the, the great unknowns, uh, especially as we think tomorrow about opening up a little bit more. We were out today and it seems like everybody was out. Um, people are wanting to move on. Uh, we are also hearing of the, the uh, warnings of scientists about doing so. There's just a lot of unknowns um, in our lives right now. So. so as we think about this particular text that we read today, specifically the one in Acts, where there's a reference to the unknown God, and we've been thinking about all the unknowns that we deal with and how the unknown can be very, very frightening and fearful and can consume so much of our time and our energy worrying about what may or may not happen or what may or may not be or what may or may not. We just don't know. That's the point of the unknown. On well, even not knowing that at what point can you uh, gather together with your family and, and, and if you do gather, can you give your kids and grandkids and grandparents a, a hug? You know, is that going to be possible? So for me, when I read this particular text, I'm always struck by the, the dichotomy between the unknown God and our relationship with Christ, with God through Christ, and how we know that. And as we've been talking about this this week, and I've been thinking about this scripture, uh, a poem that I wrote when I was in my doctoral studies came to mind about an event that happened when I was a little girl. We used to, on Sundays after church, when we were all dressed up in our Sunday best, we would load up in my dad's old Oldsmobile, and my mom and dad and the two little boys would be in the front seat, and the four of us girls would be in the back, and we'd go for a Sunday afternoon drive. And we would often drive country roads and end up in various places, but one of my dad's favorite destinations was to go to one of the lakes nearby. and. For some reason, he liked to go to where the boat ramp was and you could drive right down to the water and he would drive right down to the edge of the water and they'd stop. And I remember this one particular day and my youngest brother was just a toddler so I couldn't have been very old, but it was a spring day and we'd driven down and I remember sitting in the car, squished in the middle in the back seat between my sisters and mom and dad and my siblings are all looking out the windshield at the, at the lake and watching the sunlight make sparkles in the water. And they're talking about how beautiful the day is and how beautiful the water looks and how clear it is. I want to be great to go fishing and all those things that they were talking about. And I couldn't even, I couldn't speak. I, I couldn't do anything. I was so terrified that the car was going to somehow roll into the water. I was a young child, I didn't understand about cars being parked and brakes and all that. I just knew that we were on a slope and the water was right there and I could see it in my head that the car was going to just go down to the water and we would be swallowed up and we would all drown in this, in this, in this lake and we wouldn't be able to escape the car. It wasn't a rational thing. It was just so terrifying and, and it was all the unknown possibilities that were out there that just filled me with fear. And then my dad turned off the car and opened the door and said, let's get out and enjoy the day. And I, of course, pressed back into my seat because I was sure all this movement was going to set the car loose and it would start rolling into the water. And everybody else got out and I'm stuck in the middle of the back seat, too scared to move. And I'm seeing my 
sisters throwing rocks in the lake and and pointing at the minnows that are swimming around in the water and all that. And I, I'm just taking these little tiny breaths, just terrified that I would move too, too quickly and the car would go down and I would be drowned. And my dad turned and saw me sitting there in the car still and he just looked at me. And I could just picture these bright blue eyes just looking at me. And he came over to the car and he held out his hand. And I looked at him and then I looked at the water and all the fear it represented. And then I looked back at my dad with his hand and I inched ever so carefully over to the door and I grabbed the metal handle and I pulled it up so slowly because I was so sure I was going to make this car go into the water. And I opened the door just enough that I could squeeze out and I took my dad's hand and he just held it and he walked me up towards the water so we could see the, the boat ramp, the road disappearing into the water and the minnows swimming around. And, and then he turned and he showed how well he knew me because I didn't even say anything. He just said, even if the car had gone into the water, the mud would have stopped it before it ever got deep enough to hurt anyone. Hmm. He knew me and I knew him. And all of a sudden, the fear I had of this lake and this boat ramp, the unknown of it, was replaced by the knowledge that my father was there watching out for me. And he knew me and he loved me. And that was so much more powerful than any fear I had. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you survived that. It was terrifying. (laughs) I bet, I bet it was. Nobody else understood how scared they were supposed to be. It was very scary. Um, so, in our text today, we have uh, an example of this uh, situation where Paul is going into a foreign place. They probably didn't have the uh, access to the scriptures. They didn't know. He had been to previous other places and, and been to synagogues and was beat up and driven out, rejected. And then um, he comes to the marketplace in Athens. And he looks around and all he sees are just countless idols, statues to all of these gods. And these statues have been there a very long time. 450 years before that, another man by the name of Socrates was walking through the same streets of Athens, seeing the same uh, uh, adherence to the gods that was somehow holding culture together. And he was dragged up to the Mars Hill, which is to the place called the Aragopagus. I had to practice that. It sounds like arrogance, don't you think? No, actually, for a long time, I thought it was a hairy octopus. And that changes the whole meaning of the story. But it's Aragopagus, and I smile when I say that because it's a major achievement. Anyway, this is like the Supreme Court uh, of the ancient world. And Socrates was uh, brought up because he was charged with introducing new thoughts, uh, which were dangerous, especially for young people. And, uh, and they were against the old religion, against the existence of their, their gods. And so he, um, he was poisoned. And so in this exact place, 450 years later, Paul comes with a belief that nobody has heard before. It goes against everything the Athenians believed in terms of, of they didn't want to say that the body was somehow holy and special and would, would be preserved after death. They wanted to know that when you died, your spirit was free at last. And, and so when Paul, he's going to build up to the resurrection. He's not going to tell the story of Abraham, of Isaac, of Sarah, of David, King David. He doesn't he don't do that. He doesn't do that. He doesn't don't do that? He doesn't do that. He instead connects with their culture. He quotes two of their poets, their, their, um, their great thinkers. Uh, in God we live and move and have our being, and, and that all are created by this God. And he somehow be able to, is able to connect in deeply in their culture, while at the same time saying God does not dwell in stone structures. God is, a, uh, is everywhere and everyone um, has access to this God. And he's building this case leading to a proclamation at the end of how important the resurrection is. That one moment was probably very offensive 
because it said that the body was important. Our physicality is important. Somehow we, even today, get the sense of, of that the body is just some, some uh, passing thing. The, the big thing is to get our souls uh, to heaven. And in that way, we're more Greek than, uh, than actually uh, Christian. Uh, but here he is saying that at a different time, because someone has entered into the history of both the Greek and the Jew, and has suffered and died upon the cross and has united all of humanity into this resurrected moment that all time from here cannot be based upon culture. We have to be free from that and we have to understand that the resurrected Christ is present and our relationship to Christ, although sometimes it seems like it's a, re- it's a relationship to a stone, a statue, something in a corner that we can go to every now and then. Um, We can't make that mistake. Paul invites us to contemporize, to to prioritize this being we call Christ. And I think that as we think of the unknowns, when Paul was walking and saw that statue to an unknown God and he was able to say, I'm going to proclaim to you who this is, our unknowns are our fears. Our unknowns are what is going to happen tomorrow. Is there going to be a tomorrow that we can count on? And in the midst of that, we proclaim the resurrected Lord, who is present even with us here in this very difficult time of of sheltering at home, trying to figure out the next step. God is with us in the midst of those unknowns and is ready to give us that love and affection that we so desperately need. And again, I urge you to think about your spiritual practice that connects you to the actual presence of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. And to be able just to sit for a moment and breathe in and imagine and feel the arms of God around you is so much more important than what you think in your head about, oh yeah, I have the right belief. We need to be able to experience the grace that is right there present with us. I'm reminded of the communion liturgy that we do whenever we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And in the great Thanksgiving, that part of the liturgy, we we celebrate and lift up what we know. What we know. And this text is all about, in Acts, this text is all about what we know. Not the unknown stuff that can cause fear or uncertainty, but what we know. And so in that liturgy, we recite about how we know God created and separated light from dark and made order out of chaos. We know these things. We know that God created and declared it good. We know that we are formed in God's own image, and we carry that image of God within us. We know these things inside. We know that God saw our suffering long ago and continued to send prophets and mentors and guides and people to lead us and show us how how to receive his grace and how to receive the promise that God is, is preparing and offering to all of us. And we know that God's love is not limited, that God's love took on the form of flesh in the form of Jesus Christ, who died for us. We know that. We know in our heads intellectually, but most importantly, we feel it inside. It gives us that sense of assurance and um, courage that we we can trust in the unknown because of what we do know. It's like my dad holding out a hand and saying, come on out. I can trust in God's presence telling us there is something in the midst of all the unknown that we can know and that it's God is with us. In the midst of our prayers, I want you to be thinking about making that movement from from thinking about Jesus as an object to thinking about Jesus as a subject right before you, right present with you. That going from, um, this is what I believe about Jesus, to a relationship that you have with your best friend. That's right there, giving you courage, infusing you with possibilities, even in the midst of the unknowns. Christ is with us. So, be in prayer. I encourage you to do this on a daily basis. It will make a huge difference in 
being able to get through this and grow and expand our souls together. God is with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. to join me in this time of prayer. It's really uh, very important for us. We are called to be a people of prayer and to believe that we serve a God who listens and a God who responds. So in that presence of Jesus Christ, we come just as if he was right here in the living room, right here in this sanctuary, right here in places throughout the, our city in which uh, people are trying to uh, figure out uh, how to open how to be safe. We are facing a time coming up in um, just yet tomorrow in which uh, some of the restrictions are being lifted. Uh, different states are lifting according to their, uh, what they're figuring out for themselves. Um, and so we, we come to a place of worry and concern um, about where this is all going to go. And so with that in mind, with the trust in the infinite love of God, we come before him. Let's pray. Gracious God, we we don't know about what our future is going to be. Every week seems to be new reports. We are anxious. Sometimes we're on edge. Sometimes we are just wondering what is going to become, uh, what is going to be the next news on the TV. We pray that you will still our hearts, make us realize that you are present with us always. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to be quiet. Teach us how to be aware of your presence and always to turn to you. We pray for the world around us and specifically for our own community as uh, restrictions are beginning to be lifted. We pray for that people would be safe, that good judgment would be made and, and as people venture out. We pray for those who are um, sick, those who have the virus, those who are tending and caring for the ones who have the virus, that you would give such grace and healing power to our community and to our nation and to our world. We pray especially for the children who are suffering in ways that we cannot imagine because of uh, the distancing, uh, because of uh, being afraid, being scared about what this is all about. We just pray that you will tenderly love them in such a way that it will bring such comfort to their lives. And we pray for our elders. We pray for those who are most vulnerable. And we do this in the name of the one who teaches us how to pray and to open up our hearts to God by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Yeah.
receive the final blessing. Thank you for joining us today. We pray that this will have, have uh, lifted your hearts, given you hope, and in some way have connected you with your community of faith. We ask the Lord of heaven and earth, the one whom we serve, the unknown God is our known God in Jesus Christ, be the light of the world, that may this light be in your heart, in your families, in your living rooms, in all those places that you go. May this light be there in all the dark places of our world today. Go and be that light. Shine forth the love of God in all that you do. Amen.